for the believer prayer has many dimensions and probably the favorite portion of the bible for many christians is of course the book of psalms actually there are five books in the book of psalms and these writings have for a long time been the favorite of christians sometimes even the psalms and proverbs gets added on to versions of the new testament like in the gideon's new testament and the one reason why christians love the book of psalms apart from the fact that it is easy to find it somewhere in the middle of the bible it helps to express our feelings especially of joy and sadness so the psalms are a collection of writings and prayers of god's covenant people israel you can call it the hymn book of israel and jesus and the early followers of jesus would have used the psalms in many many wonderful ways there are many references to the psalms in the writings of the new testament i believe songs are important because our understanding of god our theology is often formed by the songs we sing so if we have shallow songs it's possible our understanding of god would not be a deeper mature one but the psalms are a wonderful guide for us in our prayer life especially when we are glad and sad and when we are bad and mad the psalms help us to pray most of us know how to pray thanksgiving prayers that's wonderful that is so much of fun but life is not always good we love thanksgiving services but what do we do when life is not going well we sometimes find it easier to pray for others who are suffering we pray that god will help them etc but we don't know how to pray well when we feel that god has failed us or others when god has not answered our prayers the way we asked him i remember as a child i had memorized psalm 23 what a beautiful psalm it is the lord is my shepherd and i shall not want memorize that in the beautiful kjv version we should recite it we used to sing versions of it the lord's my shepherd i'll not want or another version because the lord is my shepherd i have everything that i need beautiful psalm we like to sing it recite it but growing up i did not have a clear idea that there were also psalms that were not so happy and so good i did not know there were lament psalms in fact as a teenager many of us would sing this song by a group called bonnie m by the rivers of babylon and i did not know that it was a lament psalm from psalm 137 i thought it was a song to dance to so i want us to look at psalm 22 five times longer than psalm 23 nobody asked me to memorize psalm 22 i wish i had and this psalm is referred to or alluded to 
some two dozen times in the New Testament. And this psalm was on the lips of our Lord Jesus on the cross. So today I'm going to share with you about another vital ingredient of our prayer life. That is praying through pain. A psalm like this one, Psalm 22, challenges us to be brutally honest and bold in our prayer life as well as being more robust in our trust of God to bring us through our pain. Many times emotions, especially painful ones, we tend to sweep them under the carpet. But then life has its own way of shocking us and saddening us. Therefore, expressing our feelings in our prayers, including our disappointments with God, is part of being totally honest before God. Now, the dilemma before most believers is this. We believe and we say God is good. He works on behalf of his people based on the mighty acts of God, what we have read in scripture and what we have experienced in our life. And we believe that God answers our prayer, especially if a lot of people pray. And then, when we look at the misery of millions, the heartbreaks of hundreds of people close to us, the horror of the headline news, and closer home, when we pray, things don't turn out the way we prayed for. The loved one we had desperately prayed for does not survive a sudden illness or accident or from the dreaded COVID. And especially in the last year or so, we are shocked to see the number of believers who passed away due to COVID. Sometimes we very sincerely try. Sometimes we decree and declare that something is already done. That the person we are praying for is already healed. We tend to use one-fourth of a verse in Isaiah 53. And then after having said that they are healed, we don't know what to say when we stand before their coffin. The human experience, friends, let's be honest, is full of moments of paradoxes, even contradictions. When you come to the book of Psalms, on one count, about one third at least of the Psalms have flowered on the soil of sadness. One out of three. And I ask myself, how many of our songs in our collection of songs that we use are from the soil of sadness? However, the Psalms are not going to solve all our theological conundrums, our struggles and contradictions. Rather, the Psalms will help us to pray through. They are a pathway for us to walk with God through the pain and conflict. How? Through lament. Lamentations? Yes. You know, in our prayers, we often learn to make requests to God. Lord, save me. Help me. Give me some money, a job, a partner in life, or whatever. And we say, ask, seek, knock. Which is okay. But suffering is not marginal in our lives. It is essential to life 
no human being believer or unbeliever is going to escape suffering sometimes we construct the christian life as if because god is with us we will have his favor no suffering at all and if we think like that when suffering comes we don't know what to do with it life has many opportunities for contradiction you serve god faithfully and then you discover cancer recently a father after losing his twin boys 24 years old both engineers laments and he says our family is broken covid took away my sons who had never harmed anyone in their entire lives you see the struggle of that man a christian who's saying why did my sons die they did not do anything wrong 25 years ago a friend of mine a professor in a seminary as his family and he were out on a picnic his 6 foot tall 16 year old son who was a good swimmer slips into the water just before their eyes and is not seen for 2 days before his body is found down river I remembered him when I was reading his commentary on Psalm 22 in the South Asia Bible Commentary. Friends, these are tragedies behind which we don't see any human hand. But then, of course, you also have situations where humans, sometimes those in your family and friends, fight you or are hurting you badly. then how then do we pray and as we pray through and pour out our thoughts and our feelings to the lord we receive the healing the strength and the comfort we desire and need psalm 22 go ahead open your bibles and you will see the heading of the psalm it says for the director of music to the tune of the doe of the morning a psalm of david do you realize this is psalm it's a prayer and it is written down in other words god's people prayed written prayers for some of us who come from some traditions we may find it not so good if prayers are written down but every time you read a psalm you are reading a written prayer it was written for public worship and it was a known tune called the doe of the morning unfortunately no one today knows what that melody was but remember it was sung in worship by god's people so this psalm though written in the first person was sung by god's people all together even though it is a psalm speaking of an innocent sufferer here supposed to be david the whole congregation is singing it to god now truth be told david was not always an innocent party that all of us who know his life stories are aware of but here the psalmist is speaking to god of how he feels he is going through undeserved suffering he didn't do anything for it and i trust that many of us will remember that this prayer was on the lips of jesus on the cross so in the inter meaning hundreds of years between david's time and jesus's time and thousands of israelites would have prayed this prayer and even after the time of jesus i like to think that during the second world war between 1941 and 45 some 6 million european jews were wiped out like flies by the nazis 
can you even imagine the painful cry of these Jewish people, many of whom would have memorized this psalm, praying in the concentration camps, O oh God, why have you forsaken me? We too can pray this prayer through our times of anguish and thus join with many of our fellow worshippers who go through pain and anguish. Now, this psalm, Psalm 22, is a mixture of lament and confidence. So we will look at the psalm in three parts, in three stanzas. Actually, it's very clear there are three stanzas, each of ten verses and verse 11 is like a transition verse. So we're going to read the text together. And I invite you when we begin to read it together, please join in. Read it out loudly. Uh, open your Bibles and read it out loudly with us. So the first stanza, talk, the psalmist speaks of being abandoned by God. The second stanza, he says he's not only abandoned by people, but he's targeted viciously targeted by people. But in the third stanza, he celebrates that God has vindicated him and he praises God. So I'm inviting you, let's read Psalm 22 together. We will first read verses 1 to 11. Let us read together. I'm reading from Psalm 22 verses 1 to 11. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from saving me, so far from my cries of anguish? My God, I cry out by day, but you do not answer. By night, but I find no rest. Yet you are enthroned as the Holy One. You are the one Israel praises. In you, our ancestors put their trust. They trusted and you delivered them. To you, they cried out and were saved. In you they trusted and were not put to shame. But I am a worm and not a man, scorned by everyone, despised by the people. All who see me mock me. They hurl insults, shaking their heads. He trusts in the Lord, they say. Let the Lord rescue him. Let him deliver him, since he delights in him. Yet you brought me out of the womb. You made me trust in you, even at my mother's breast. From birth, I was cast on you. From my mother's womb, you have been my God. Do not be far from me, for trouble is near, and there is no one to help. Verses 1 and 2. Where are you, God? You are not helping me. Why? My God. You see, the psalmist's sense of bewilderment is more because he knows about the great stories of deliverance. Look at verses 3 to 5. The Israelites, he says, trusted him. See the word they trusted three times in verses 4 and 5. And this psalmist says he also trusts God. But he does not see the deliverance he expects. The psalmist remembers the exodus, the conquest when they entered the land. He reminds God. But why is God not doing it now? You see, his source of confidence was God's faithfulness to his ancestors. But it looks like God has abandoned him now. And in the next five verses, verses 6 to 10, Others around him have also abandoned him. Others have humiliated him so much that he does not even feel he's a human being. He says, I am a worm. They mock him. They even call him, you must be a hypocrite. That's why God has abandoned you. You are a sinner. Friends, sometimes when calamity Tragedy strikes us for no reason. Others can be very quick to judge us. Like the three friends of Job, Eliphaz, Bildad and Zophar. 
the good thing they did was they kept quiet for some days but after that when they started speaking their unhelpful pontifications they ultimately made god even angry so the psalmist is crying out to god from my birth you have been part of my life in fact in verse 9 he speaks of god as the midwife at his own birth and like the other israelites the psalmist also would have been part of the covenant people circumcised on the 8th day so god's past faithfulness to himself is a source of his confidence he grew up trusting in god but where are you now god now you may ask me is it okay to tell god like this how we feel why should i he already knows how i feel right now we all are on a journey of learning to pray and sometimes when we pray it appears as if you know god must have a smile when he hears sometimes what we pray especially in public prayer because we know others are also hearing it but we don't need to inform or educate god that's for sure however psalms like this encourage us to protest to god tell god how we feel the majority of the psalm speaks of the psalmist's life condition and how he feels descriptions of life's situations and his feelings not about what god is supposed to do but this is how i feel god his anguish his pain using some of the most vivid and memorable metaphors one could use that's what we see in psalm 22 sometimes it feels like we are going through a test we feel abandoned by god even our lord jesus experienced that he was made to question his relationship with the father if you are the son of god was a temptation if you are a child of god why are you suffering like this is the test that comes to us but thankfully jesus began his ministry by the assurance at his baptism that he was already the beloved son of the father he didn't have to prove that by anything nothing was going to change that reality not his life situations but the psalmist expresses his feelings to god